So, hello and welcome to all of my wonderful subscribers, but especially to Eugene over at Forward Development, um, who this video is really for. It's more of a technical video, definitely not to do with uh, just riding or gaming. It's basically to explain the need for certain access to act in a certain way uh, for a motorcycle simulation. Now forward development are in fact the people responsible for um, city car driving and they at the moment basically just make for cars but as I'm building a system for the Texas Police Department or rather for Dweepod which is um, a police course where they teach um, impaired driving education. So this is actually quite important as Eugene over at Forward Development is going to try and put a motorcycle into city car driving and obviously we need to have different inputs compared to a car. So basically Eugene I'm going to try and show you what we need um, using my control system as you can see from the pictures uh, these aren't toys uh, they're mainly real motorcycle components uh, using my MGE designs which converts the mechanical movement to electronical it then feeds to a Leo Bodner BU0836X board uh, in this circumstance uh, now these balls are brilliant and basically I'd say they're the best in the world um, you can see I have here in front of this my interface properties and you can see if I move the controller oh I have to click on the window to activate it, it does help but you can see that my actual movements are all registering 100% in Windows so basically as long as software is written that it will receive a Windows input it should function perfectly obviously it depends on your physics now as you can see I have a front brake and a rear brake now both of these have to be analog and to be quite honest you can't use say a handbrake from a car which is basically on or off as a rear brake or a front brake you seriously need to have a completely analog and completely separate as you can see that movement has to be independent and it's very important for a motorbike because in certain scenarios you're not going to want to use your front brake especially in rain or snow as much as you would do normally so you're going to want to have more control over your rear brake so it's important that people do have this ability okay so basically what we're going to do is pop into GB bikes and I hope I've got this set up correctly so please excuse me if I have to pop around a bit and maybe sort something out. Okay, so here is GB Bikes. Now you can see my controller inputs here. And this is the actual area where you'll see how all the inputs actually function. So my clutch, front brake, rear brake, throttle and steering. Now we're going to go uh, into the A1 ring using the CBR 900 RR from Blackheart which is a road bike not a race bike although this is a racing simulation this is basically to show you how you really need to have the basics for a motorcycle simulation so we're going to hop onto the track and basically you can see I'll go into Max Hud which is this which is developed also by um, Hornet Max at GB Bikes that allows us to put additional information on the screen so you can see here at the bottom we have a lean angle and this will show us these blue which is rather hard to see but these show the full lean that the bike actually goes to then over here we've got our inputs so you can see front brake rear brake clutch throttle and basically this will show you how you'll need to have your inputs to function really in city car driving like I said you, it really is important that you don't use a handbrake for one of the brakes because that's just on and off so anyhow I'm just going to do a slow pop around the track so you can see through watching 
how the inputs are going, how it actually is. So, also, you really need to be able to change down to first gear, then up into neutral, and then up into second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay, you've got to remember you really need that neutral in the right place if you can, otherwise, it's just slightly wrong. But as long as you've got shift up as going up in the gears and shift down as going down in the gears, that's fine, and they obviously need to be digital. So let's put her into first. Now, if I'm talking, I have a tendency to crash. So I'm not going to <laughs> ride too fast and make too much of an idiot on myself, which I normally do actually on this curve here, because it's a terrible pit curve. But anyhow, if you watch, you can see where I'm closing the throttle, pulling in the clutch, it's, you need to have that movement and as you can see I've got both brakes that I need to operate so it's a case of you need to be able to have that full analog movement and not a digital turn on turn off a handbrake that is extremely incorrect and as I said if you're teaching people driver education you're going to really want them to have full controls as they should be and especially when you consider that like I said if you're driving in wet conditions you really are going to use your rear brake a lot more than you normally would do but you're going to want full control over it so it's really a case of you need to have that control and you can see my handlebars are not leaning so far but you can see that basically I've got about 25 degrees of rotation either side a real motorbike as you can see on this basically a road bike is going to go to about 45 degrees of lean either side a race bike will go over 60 and even this will go over 50 you know but basically the, the lean angle of my systems is 25 degrees which is about half of what you're generally going to do on this particular bike so you need to slow your steering down have it so that rotation is a lot less than you would on a car now obviously you can have up to 900 degrees and more so you don't want that on a motorcycle you know, maximum you're going to want is a lean angle of 60 degrees here on either side and even 50 is going to be fine if you're doing a simulator for in town because you will not be doing such fast riding as you would on a race bike. Even this bike probably on the country road at most times most people will probably get it up to about 55 degrees. So that's the maximum you're really going to want to do. So I'm going to leave it there and I hope that that basically just shows you the kind of input we actually need to have in a simulator in order that it functions correctly and at the end of the day um, it shouldn't be that complicated as long as you know you know you don't have to have it so that it's like a car you've got a lot less rotational degrees but you need to have that more finesse adjustment for each control you need linearity you need a dead zone you need to be able to adjust the sensitivity and the sensitivity is very important and it's basically a case of once you can adjust those then you'll be able to have it so that the controller can be set up correctly for the scenario anyhow uh, like I said mainly this is for you Eugene I hope it's helped um, if not just send me an email and to anyone else thank you for watching like I said it was more of a, a technical kind of what we need in a simulation for someone that's doing rider education anyhow I hope that's helped and thank you once again people and uh, have a wonderful weekend goodbye <laughs>